What's up, everybody? Today's I'm working on the song bringer. We're getting close to day 255, though. That's going to be pretty interesting. All right. So what I'm working on is um, <clears throat> the artwork for the secret mo secret dungeon. And um, I still I'm still working on mock-ups and other kinds of pieces of art to go with it. Uh, so I'm not going to be doing programming and stuff like that today with it getting it going in the game, but I am going to be doing finishing up the artwork. So tomorrow I can finally implement this and put it in the game. What's up, Lime? How's it going, man? Here's the scene with the psychedelic boss. The psychedelic scene with the you're fighting this guy. And this other one. Where's this other one? Here we go. Yeah, nice, man. Right on. You're about to get greenlit. You'll be there any second now, man. Nice, cool. Yeah, dude, you're so close. You're so close. Um, mine was at number 48, and then, like... It, I never even got to check it before it was just greenlit. So it was that fast. So uh, now that you're number 20, I'm sure you're going to be about to be greenlit. So congratulations. What's up, Peter? Ciao, Bello. Okay, so the next thing to do is start... Um, Taking these these bits of artwork and putting them into the individual entities so that tomorrow I can actually make this all playable. Uh yeah, I I'm pretty sure. Can't really remember, but I'm pretty sure they email you. Yeah. Okay, so then this piece of art right here, I've got these uh, living sort of, these grass entities. I'm gonna start taking the grass entities and turning them into individual things, animating them and things like that, so. Kelp, I think it's just kelp and grass. Yeah, this one will work. Grass. Whoops. Not all that. Mars, uh, high five, man. Yeah, he's got an awesome game. Rhythm, a rhythm. Is a rhythm such a word? I'm trying to select this. Which layer is this? Oh man. This is the thing. When you do a bunch of layers in Photoshop, there's like tons and tons of layers. You have no idea which one is which. When all you want to do is copy the grass. All I want to do is copy the grass. Oh, here. If I select that layer and the grass, regular Control C. All right, that's it. There we go. All right, cool. I'm gonna start animating these. <laughs> hey, okay, so arrhythmia, that's, but that, that's actually a word though, right? Arrhythmic is definitely a word, right? I'm 
I'm so bad at spelling rhythm. <laughs> All right. Is that even, is that right? No way. Oh no no. Define. Oh here it is. No, it's not arrhythmic. Oh, two R's. Ah, yeah, yeah. Not rhythmic. But there's no such thing as an A rhythm, right? Is there? No, there's only arrhythmia. An arrhythmic. Ah, yeah. Right, let's do this. Let's get this thing to be around the right size. All right. <clears throat> oh, dang. I originally had all these as individual layers. So I actually, oh, I can just draw them again. Yeah, I'll just draw these again. Yeah, okay, I'll save this. Yeah. Oh, the story deals with medicine. Oh. Oh. All right, I'm gonna start separating these out into different layers. So it can be individually animated. So how you guys doing today? Marza? Peter? I'm just making art. It's gonna be an art day. Making all this art so that I can take these final like like this stuff, the final mock-up, and turn this into an actual playable game. It's kind of nice making just art for a couple days. I did took two days and just made art. And it felt pretty good to get kind of creative with everything, even like the effects on top of the screen and stuff like that, shadows, decorations in the world and stuff like that. And what and kind of exactly dial in what these effects are gonna look like for whatever. Yes, the inner Bob Ross has been channeled. Oh, you're lost in testing. I was just saying, how are you? Hope you're well, man. Yeah. 
<laughs> all right, all right. Cool, man. Okay, so now I'm gonna start making these wave in the wind a bit, or like sort of, everything is gonna look like it's breathing and alive. So even like everything is gonna look like, almost like the inspiration for all of this is underwater. That's what I'm thinking. It's gonna feel like you're underwater, but it's not actually underwater, so. It would be best to make these, give them good titles first before you start copying layers. Let's get a timeline going. And turn off all this propagate one. Bull hoggy. <laughs> nice, nice. <laughs> All right, easiest to start with one frame at a time here. And I imagine there'll be four frames each. Yeah, four frame animations, that'll be good. So this one is gonna start waving. First, it's gonna get pretty straight. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, it's a secret dungeon. Nice, man. Thanks, Marza. Yeah. Hopefully it's pretty cool to play, you know? I think it's going to be very interesting to play. Um, one thing that's going to happen when you go into this dungeon is you're going to you're going to have you're not going to have jib, so it's going to be totally different than playing the rest of the game. And also, you're going to lose your sword right at first. So you're like you wake up inside this dungeon and you're like, whoa, how the hell did I get here? Where is this? What the hell is going on? Where's my sword? Where's Jib? And so you you have to like, you know, you have to gain this ability, find your sword, and beat a bunch of enemies and mobs, and then finally beat this guy in sort of a so it's gonna be it's gonna be like a dungeon, like the existing dungeons, using the same generator and everything, but totally different style. So hopefully that adds a nice variety to the game. Yeah, I'm pretty sure devs create those. I don't know much about them. Um, uh, I just know that some... Yeah, I know a lot of games are using them. And so that must be something that's working for, for, for devs and for gamers. Uh, those are pillars for now. Yeah, I'm going to make them a little clearer, the pillars, by adding some green moss growing on them and stuff. Yeah, they're collectible, they're tradable. I think they're sellable or something like that. Like you can exchange them for Steam points or something. I'm not exactly sure. I got a bunch of them when I started playing Axiom Verge. I'm like, oh, look at all these cards I have. But other than that, I haven't got any cards for other games I've played. What's up, T? Welcome, man. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Yeah, I think they're kind of collectibles, but they have some value. Yeah, 
you can exchange them and stuff. Looks like I might need to actually do six frames for this. Can I draw you a happy little pixelated tree? Sure. Oh. Right? You can never get a full set just by playing? Oh, lame. Nice. Yeah, look at all these green, right? It's very green and I'm working on grass too. Here, you want a happy tree? Here's a happy tree. It's a happy broccoli tree. Isn't it amazing? <laughs> All right, yeah, so maybe seven animations actually. That's fine. Let's make this animation a lot slower. I'm thinking maybe 0.3. 3.3. So this blade looks like it's dancing. But I want some other ones that look more like they're undulating. So next one, let's do an undulating grassy rhythm. <laughs> right, you liked it? People said some funny stuff on that stream. Yeah, they are like tentacle mobs, but you know when you when you take it out and you put it in a whole scene, they'll look less like tentacles. And when I get a lot of, a lot more randomness, you see, I I just copy and pasted all the same grass everywhere. So that's why this is really kind of a boring drawing, actually. Overall, when you start looking at the details, this boring details. So it just needs more variety, be a little more interesting. So that's what I'm working on now, you know, animating, creating more variety. Yeah, it's supposed it's seaweed inspired, but it's actually above ground. So there's you're not underwater, but this whole scene is underwater inspired, right? So it's supposed to feel like you're sort of underwater, but you're not really. You're not at all actually underwater. So every every bit of this, there's this whole see this light going on here. These these crazy uh, yeah, like here's a good way to show it. This light that's happening that is going to change. So it's going to look like you're almost inside a fishbowl or something you know this is going to animate it's this animated perlin noise so there, there'll be some kind of animation running all the time on the whole screen to give it this feeling also that you're underwater so i'm working on that and the grass and uh, um, this thing too this whole peyote bush here this will like breathe it'll like go you know so that's the that's the goal for all this Oh, oh yeah. What's up, Pedro? What's up, Nug Troll? Uh. Uh. Yeah, I'm wearing gloves. It's been cold here. What's up, you guys? Welcome to the stream. Yeah, so I'm, I'm working on taking this artwork, these two mock-ups I've created so far, and taking out the individual art and making it so I can put it all in the game. This will probably take, this might take all the rest of today just to take this artwork and make it ready 
So it, it'll probably be tomorrow by the time I actually can play this. So I'm really excited. I really, I'm really excited to play this. It's gonna be an interesting dungeon. What's up, Beetle? Welcome to the stream, man. So this one's already starting in its upward position. So we're gonna need four different frames. <clears throat> Do I? I was actually thinking two, day 255 and day 256 are going to be in big days. I don't know. Maybe I'll play the game those days. What's up, Rocket Bunny? I'm good, man. Yeah, I'm working on those mock-ups right now. I'm taking them and taking out the individual art and making them ready for the game. They should have lightning. Uh, Beetle, yeah, there's an NEDB for this. Yeah, okay. All right, no problem. We'll make it a BC Warrior Day, too. Go for the epic. <clears throat> epic superness. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice lime. I like that a lot. What's up, Boogie? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Oh, uh, yeah. All right. Uh, okay, so I'm animating this piece of grass right now. Next frame. I want these to really undulate. Wait, I only got four frames. There's that's the middle one. Hmm. Let's take this one. Let's here. We'll go one more pixel there. Let's try that. Oh, okay. Got four frames now. Yeah. <laughs> BC Warrior Day. Yeah, Rocket Bunny, that's the inspiration. It's supposed to look like it's underwater. Nice. I'm glad it does. What's up, DuPont? Yeah, there's a there's gameplay on every video everywhere, but I'll I'll actually play the game here in a sec. I'll play it now. What's up, Solar Fire? It's going good, man. I'm working on this mock-up art here. So this is gonna this is the um the psychedelic. This is a, a really gonna be an interesting dungeon to get to. Um, not only is it is it interesting to get there to to even get there because you need the red cup. You need to go drink from a fountain. You poison yourself. And you wake up inside this secret dungeon and you have to gain an ability and fight this guy and fight a mobs of enemies and stuff like that to get out. You lose your sword when you get there, so you have no sword. And also you're not you don't have jib, so your your robot buddy friend cannot come with you inside these secret 
optional dungeons. So though three of the dungeons in the game are going to be like this. They're optional dungeons. And so I'm working on the artwork for them today. I got these mock-up artwork finished. And I'm taking it and putting it into individual frames like this individual blade of grass I'm you know animating all the grass and stuff like that so it looks it's gonna look really wavy and really psychedelic hopefully probably do some special shaders and stuff for these dungeons too so that's what I'm working on what's up finest gold yeah you gotta drink the kool-aid yeah of course I've heard of Lambeer I was really honored when uh, Rami Ismail actually uh, re he tweeted about my Gam Gama Sutra post last week. So yeah, and I use their press kit too, and they're they seem like cool people. No, I've never officially played Fallout, any of it. Nice, yeah, maybe it will. Maybe it will. I've I've been wanting to draw some kind of poster scene with these guy these two guys fighting. If you zoom in, it kind of gets a little bit better, but. It would look better if it were actually a poster, you know, like I really went and made the poster already version of this. So yeah, I got a request to play the game, so I'll, I'll play that here. Nice, right on. Um, it's going to put a key in here. I don't want him there right now to show. I'm going to turn him off really quick. His name's not a Kiyu, though. I think his name's going to be None or Zero, or maybe zero, just None Zero. Or maybe he just never tells you his name. Here we go. Yeah. Nice. Right on. Well, yeah, I, I will be making a new poster again soon, though. I really liked making a poster before, and it got me really inspired to make, you know, first of all, like, better art, but second of all, to, like, get inspired for pieces of the game you know, to make. So this is the entrance to that dungeon. It doesn't actually work yet, but I'm actually, because, like, everything is all broken. Like, I can't actually get in. Um collision with this whole fountain thing here, but I can't drink from the fountain. So if I use the red cup on the fountain, you drink from the cup, you drink from the fountain, it's poison, uh, here's where the screen is going to fade out, and you wake up inside the secret dungeon. So that's what that is. But yeah, to the people who are just requesting to see the game, Beetle, um, this is the game. It's like Zelda 1. It's a lot like Zelda 1. So that's the main inspiration. But the big difference is that it's procedurally generated. So you enter six letters and you create a new game, you create a new adventure, and that gives you a totally different world based on those six letters. So this is the this is the world I'm playing right here. Oh, the map's broken. I forgot. Um, but anyways, yeah, that's it. There's there's um there's levels. There's dungeons. There's an overworld. Um, there's item crafting. You have your f robot buddy, Jib. He scans enemies' bodies when they die. So, like, is this an enemy? Oh, here's some enemies. So, your robot buddy scans the bodies of all your enemies dialogue their story so there you go there's a little introduction to the game let me get back to making the art now <laughs> or maybe ralph pmc solo <laughs> yeah that's on the list that's definitely on the list as you get a second monitor i would love that i would love that i can't really afford that but i would love it Yes, it's a party cup. Yeah, it's a red party cup. It looks like a pill bottle. <laughs> Thanks, Marza. Hmm. Nice. You still have your Zelda 1 cartridge? Good for you, man. It's awesome. I had a whole box of old Super Nintendo and Nintendo games, 
And I don't know what the hell happened to him. I lost my box of games. From my childhood. I had all the Final Fantasy games, everything. Alright, uh, okay, we're ready to animate this frame now, too. See how these work to, uh, together. Yes, the only problem is this one frame where it jumps too far. Which one is that? Oh, this frame. <laughs> Looks like they're dancing. I like it. I like it. I like it. Uh, uh well, it's not. It's not only a single fountain that you use it on. You use it on three different fountains, and I'd rather have players have the reward of using items because it makes it more of an adventure game. You know, when you have to use something, um. Yeah, when you have to equip something, it just makes it so that you're you're actually doing something as a player. You know what I mean? If you and you figured something out as a player, it rewards you psychologically. It rewards you as a player to equip something and use it on something rather than it just happening automatically with the game. Um, but I don't know. I'm open to that. I'm totally open to changing that if you know if that's something everybody's like you know every if everybody agrees that it, it sucks to have to equip the red cup then you know i'm not i'm open to changing that i, I don't think it's going to be too much of a hassle though this is something you really only do th one to three times in the entire game so if you're playing the game for three hours and there's only one place where you have to equip this item and it kind of rewards you as a player i don't think it's gonna be too much of a problem Yeah, and it keeps the secret more secret, exactly. Yeah, it's definitely going to zoom in. Yeah, I haven't finished any of that, but it's going to zoom in. And also boss fights are going to zoom in. All right, next frame. What, did I really name these all one? Hmm. Punch out, right? Nice, right on. Hmm, yeah. My Xbox controller is already, though, dying on me. It's starting to make squeaky noises and stuff. I'm like, what? I just bought that this year. But my Nintendo controllers... Dude, I played those so many hours. And they, they totally didn't... They didn't go out on me. Never. Never once did my Nintendo controllers ever go out. Okay, I gotta turn this one off to do that one now. So... Frame 2. Here you go. This one, let's see, this one is already kind of started this way. Let's let's do that. Let's just keep on with that trend. This one moves a little.
<laughs> really? What made me want to make games and program? Dude, I love your questions, Rocket Bunny. You transport me back to the very moments when I started making games, when I was 14, 15, man. And before that, I totally wanted to. Okay, so years before that, when I when I was 14 or 15, I started le actually learning how to program and make games. But when I was 11 or 12, that's when the desire to make games was born because I'd played so many games when I was a kid. I started playing video games at like age eight or something like that. That's when Nintendo's really first came out. Um, or no, not really first came out, but close to around there. Anyways, I would, um, but playing games like Zelda and Mario and all these games back then, the very first NES games made me want to program. I was like, you know what? If I could, if, if somehow in my lifetime, if I can ever learn how to make a video game, I would love to make a video game because I had always had these ideas for how I would make a video game. You know, I was like, hmm, I like, I like this game, but I wish it would do this, or I wish the levels would be like that or whatever. And so I always had that desire to make games. And, and then as I grew up, it became something also that was very, very rewarding because it took a special person to be able to make games and it takes a really special person to be able to make games, all of them themselves. And that has been a real like honor, like a big peak point of my creative life or whatever is just being able to do the art and the music and program. And um, yeah, and so I really want to share that with these streams, how to do all three of those things and do them well. And business too is another huge part of making games, all those things. So like, I don't know, I just want to inspire other people to be able to get there faster. You know, if you want, if you want to be able to do that too, I'd like to help other people do it faster. You know, how can you, how can you become an artist faster and a programmer and a musician faster in life? Um, and so that's kind of one of my passions too right now. Um, but good question, dude. Good, always good questions. Oh. Nice, man. Good for you. Good for you, man. So that's frame, the second frame of that. <clears throat> Let's make the third frame of this one the same as this, the first. And then we'll go the other direction for this one. So this is going to like all teeter that way. Actually, let's get it to even turn a bit. Yeah, right? It's so rewarding, right? Yeah, Lime. And that's another reason I love streaming, too, is I get to meet people like you, Lime Studios, and everybody else, too, that's making all their own games. Even if you're not making all of your own games or whatever, it doesn't matter. You know, if, you, if, you, if you're a programmer and you love doing what you do, that's awesome. I would love connecting with you, you know? And if you're an artist and you love doing that, if you're a musician and you love doing that, no matter what, I love create. I love connecting with other creative people. It's feels really good, you know. I think you need that. I think we all need that as creators. We need to really like, um, you know, be a community together. You know, like just like just be, you know, being supportive of each other and encouraging of each other and listening to each other and like, you know, that kind of stuff really, really is necessary because there's not many other people out there that are creators like like this. You know, there's really a small percentage of us that are actually making games and stuff and programming or, or whatever. You actually look at the actual slice of humanity that's making software or whatever. It's very small, like under a percent of everyone on the planet makes software or something like that. So, yeah, you guys are special. It's cool to connect. That's cool, man. You're learning Coco Studio X. Yay. Nice man. What were you using before? What were you using before you made Coco Studio X or learned Coco Studio X?
<laughs> yeah, nice. Good for you, dude. I like that you just jumped in and did it. Yeah, right? Yeah. I remember those days, dude. I remember those days. For me, back that moment happened for me, but with DOS. There's just a black screen, white cur white text, white cursor. And I thought it was so cool that, you know, I could do simple little things on my dad my mom's computer, actually, in my case. Yeah, totally. Oh, did it again? Dang. Man, I don't know what's up. Stream goes in, goes out. The stream has its own door. It could just let itself in and out whenever it wants. Oh, you've been Game Maker. Okay. Awesome. Well, man, good for you. <laughs> Programming around bow ties? What do you mean? Yeah, okay, this will work now. Let's get this all hooked up again. This one was layer. Uh, one copy. This is getting confusing. Two. Two copy. Hmm. Oh, nice. Right on. You had a bow ties. Well, cool, man. If you're calling it a day, good night, man. Thanks for joining. Thanks for saying hi. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yes, Beetle, of course. Please post a link to your game. the hell happened to this animation? Layer one. Okay, I think that's right. Let's see. Huh. You can barely even see this one animation. Let's move that. Let's move this last piece of grass. This frame here. Yeah, man. Good night. Hey, what's up, Mike? Yeah, totally. Space Shooter 2. Nice, dude. I like your graphics. Oh my gosh, this totally reminds me of the, the, the very first game I made had uh, this similar art, like uh, lettering style. So cool, dude. Right on. <sighs> okay, uh, I think I want this, this these frames to dance a little more. Or this this whole second frame guy. This whole yeah, this whole section. Oh my gosh, should be this would be way better if I could actually just. Um, no, that's not gonna work. Photoshop. Okay. Well, anyways. Uh, yeah, that frame there. 
move that blade that way to copy as well. Mm, something messes up here. So there's that, and then that, and then that. Wait. So this little bit right here needs to go over there. There we go. Okay, one last blade of grass to do for this animation here. What's up, Froom? Yeah? Oh, oh man. Yeah, now he's command line shooter, sweet. Similarly, I have lost my very first games too. The very first games I made in 1995 are completely lost forever. Lost the source code to them. I don't know where it went. I may maybe it's still on one of my CD backups somewhere, but that's a long shot for sure. So we got frame three. Make four. Wait, no. Just four total copies. Now this frame. There, now we got it all animated. Just gotta fill in the animations. Yeah, ASCII games. My first game was about chickens in space. It was also a space game, and it was uh, a puzzle game mostly. So like a puzzle game, sort of. Uh, there's asteroids, but but like it was space, and there was you're in this like one ship, and you're supposed to save all these chickens from asphyxiating. The chickens were purple. They, um, you had like all these green enemies and like little puzzly things and warps and teleports and huge mazes and stuff. Yeah, you, right? You lost the code. Yeah, totally. Get up. I think I want this one to undulate to the left. What language? I use the C language and there was no such thing as game engines back then really. There were, but they were mostly cost of license fee, which is really expensive. So I had to learn how to make games on my own. There was nothing but a few books out. I read some books and basically had to learn how to make a DOS game, how to switch your how to switch your video cards, memory mode, and everything. I had to learn, you know, like it was pretty complicated to make a game back in 1995 on on DOS or whatever with DOS. Make it a mini game. I, like I said, I don't have the I don't have the um, the source code anymore. I'd have to rewrite it, but. I don't know. <laughs> that was such an old game. It's like, it's kind of embarrassing how bad it was, you know? Why am I in creative? Because um, it's sort of a nice new place to express that. But you can do, you can do game development is a creative thing. And Twitch has in this new creative category. So I'm trying it out. Is there, is there a reason why it's, it seems, is there some, why would you ask this question? Is that wrong? Is it wrong of me to be in the creative category? 
Should I go back to game development or something? I put game dev as one of the hashtags. I don't know if that works though. Yeah, my friends actually made stuff in assembly back then. But yeah, I think thank God I didn't have to really make my first game in assembly. That would have sucked. I did it in all in C, you know. C C was much more friendly than assembly. We the bus, right on. Cool, man. So for anybody that just joined the stream, I'm working on this artwork here. This is a, a mock-up of like a DOS, or a, not a DOS, a boss, boss fight in this secret optional dungeon. And I'm working on the grass. I'm animating the grass for all this. And then I'm going to animate, I'm going to animate pretty much everything. Here's another scene from this psychedelic secret optional dungeon. Everything is going to breathe. Everything is going to move. It's going to be a very, very animated world here, but I'm really excited about it. It's going to be adding a lot of, a lot of variety to this game. Whoops, I did this on the wrong one. There. <laughs> what did I do? What did I do to this one frame? Uh, to, to, wait, what? Starts there. Lose a little, oh, got my motion going wrong here. So that was supposed to sort of keep moving, but then snap back sort of. Yeah, the only part is this very last frame where it all that this one little shift pixel shift here doesn't look that good. Let's try without. Yeah, there we go. Now it's a lot more nice and undulating looking. Cool. All right. Yeah, we got an animation done. Nice. What's it like in California? Well, besides what you just mentioned here, which is actually the case, uh, what's it like? It's very relaxed. People are, people here um, are very mellow, sort of low key. You know, no one's really uptight. No one's really that agitated or fast moving, except in kind of in LA a little bit, but you know, for the most part, the West Coast in general is kind of a real relaxed vibe. 
pretty progressive thinking people, um, friendly, warm, you know, it's a nice place. Mountains here are beautiful. Love the mountains. Oh, well, you want to implement your game logic with a, an update method. So, Boogie, you would go like, uh, let me show you how um, my game works with a tick. So I have a diff I have a controller which basically controls the the entire. This is my game loop in in essence, right? And um, it starts with a schedule update. So um, at the very beginning of the game, I call tick uh, like a schedule and update. So is this it right here? Schedule update. Yeah, schedule. I create a scheduler. This is a little bit different. This is not how you would typically do it, but you would create a scene, right, Boogie? So you create a scene. You um you give that you subclass your scene. That's right. So sorry. First thing you want to do is subclass scene. And I did this with this a different way because I actually subclass tick scheduler from node. So you can actually create a node or a layer or a scene. It's gonna basically you need some kind of Cocos 2DX node entity to hold your your game loop sort of it's it's that the scheduler has to work that way so you can you schedule an update so you would go you would go like tick scheduler or i mean um if this were a different type of node you would just go um whatever my node's name is that could be this um it's just schedule update Sorry, my autocompletes take it forever here. Schedule update. Why are you so slow? Schedule update. There it is. Dang, this is frustrating. Why is this going so slow? Anyways, that's all you gotta do, man. Create a node, call schedule update. If you're I hope you guys are watching. I don't know what's up with my system here. It's really glitchy. Sorry, I'll I'll try and answer that again if you're not if you didn't get that. <laughs> nice. Okay, cool. This is ready to go. Um, I'm gonna do a big old animation now of a big sort of seaweed kelp inspired thing. Nice, nice. Okay, I hope that helped. Yeah. Nice. It's revolt team because yeah, I know. I haven't been coding in forever, but I'll be back to coding tomorrow. <clears throat> you you'll be okay, Xcode, right? When I start coding again, you will you will revolt on me, will you? Xcode. Xcode autocomplete. Alright, good. We got three grass zero. We got one one animation of some grass. That's living, living grass type of entity. Now I want to um, take some of these bigger plants, these big old tall kelp groups. Here's one individual piece of kelp or whatever. This might need more frames. More than six or whatever. I'm debating on whether I should do more than one per animation. Yeah, it's going to get pretty complicated to do lots of these at once. Hmm. I should probably just do one. Nice, man. Mutiny. X goes in mutiny mode.
All right, we got a frame ready. Start. Right on. Yay, school. Right on, man. Save. Level, this is the three. I guess this is a tree. Sort of like a tentacle tree. All right, much easier to manage only having one of these frames to do at a time though. Okay. Thing is, I want to rotate it from the base. I don't know if this is going to work like that, actually. It's getting dirty. Yeah, it probably is. I don't know, though. So I'm just cleaning this up after I rotated this art. Clean up the pixels a little bit. So this is gonna be frame two. And then frame three, it undulates a little more. Thinking it shifts here. Shifts some of its middle a little more. In the base a little bit. Yeah, it gets like kind of straight. <laughs> yeah. Of these pixels, and let's try one more frame.
Yeah. I use Ableton. Okay, you're asking, yeah. I use Ableton. And I use um, BFXR. BFXR. There's also BFXR.net. Yep, tentacles. Hentai? What's a hentai? What's up, Ziri, by the way? Oh. <laughs> Where's the hentai? Nice, man. Let's see how this turned out. Create an animation for it. Oh, don't search for that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I haven't seen enough anime then because I don't know where this is going. Oh, poor me. I'm, I'm in the dark on this one. I'll use the last one. Oh, it didn't look that good. Hmm. What's the problem with this? First of all, we need to zoom out a little. Oh, man, that turned out horrible. Hopefully, I can fix it with a couple frames, though. <clears throat> Oh, oh, my stole is still, uh, yes, I'm pure from these horrors. Well, good, I'm definitely not going to forget all about that word. I'm listening, I'm listening, I'm listening to the experts here. So where does this animation go wrong? Let's watch it some more. Oh, it jumps like crazy at the end. Maybe that's not quite the end. Ah, oh well, okay, I'm gonna keep that as, as is for now. We'll figure this out later. Um, but yeah, this is good enough to at least have something tomorrow to be able to put in and quickly, you know, create this art, this scene with those kind of tentacles and stuff like that. I got one tentacle done, that's enough to get this that started. Okay, next thing, I'm gonna get this... Um, This peyote flower here to to breathe. It's gonna go in and out as if it's almost like a heart beating. Yeah, it's very twitchy. It's not it's not perfect at all. Actually, I don't even like it. I'll probably redo it all. I think pretty much. C Rose, is that is that a nice name for it? C Rose? Oh, is this thing?
Oh, nice. Really? I've never heard of those. Whoa. Yeah, right? Ah, what is this? Crazy. All right, so yeah, breathing, breathing, breathing. Let's get this thing to breathe. I think in each one of these sections is gonna kind of bulge in and out. To make it bulge, I'm going to use the transform, the 3D transform tool thing. Pull out this edge a little bit. This edge a little bit. Hopefully that's not too much. <laughs> it is a thing. <laughs> we both learned something. <laughs> it already kind of looks like a heart. The living passageways in that lone survivor game. Which one was that? Bot, band you bot. Oh, they changed all the icons on me. How do I ban this guy? Ban, permanent ban. Here we go. Permanent ban. Toby Peters, what's up, man? Is that Guy Fieri stuffed in an apple or a tomato? Nice, good. Who's Guy Fieri? <laughs> it does. It's like Guy Fieri's head. Totally. Boop, boop. Yes. Oh, oh. Wow, right. I forgot all about him. What did he do? There was a bot. Yeah, that was a bot, dude. He's just here to post a link. It's not actually an actual person. He's just here to post a link and try and get try and make money for his whoever created him. I think that's what their goal is to, with those. Oh, we're not ready for the next frame. All right, let's get this other side. Start pulsating. I'm using the lasso tool for this one. And then uh, a, a 3D trans, not a 3D transform, but a, a kind of trans, free transform, using a free transform.
What's up, Extreme? What you asking who about? <laughs> That's awesome. I want it to be slower. This might only need two frames. Now we can we can go with a third frame in between those. Blend them together a bit. Okay, but that's good. I like this. This is a good technique. So once again, I'm going to use this tool. Who was that bot? It was base score. He was posting a link. He's like, why don't you use gold mine? Whatever gold mine is. And then it had a link. <clears throat> All right. So I'm gonna keep on free transforming each bit of these. This in the front here, it's gonna happen a little bit differently. But still, it's going to happen. So, like, it's going to bulge a little bit there, bulge a little bit here. The center bit there bulges, bulges. Down here, it's going to bulge a little. Maybe a little more. Okay, let's try that. And then fill in these little bits that got messed up. All right, oh, there's some more. Okay, let's see if we're on the right track still. Oh, yeah. It might be a little bit much, actually. Let's see the back as well. Yeah, yeah, he was posting links. Cool. Wow, that's awesome. Whoa. How, how is this game? You played it? Looks pretty fun, actually. I mean, I haven't seen much of it, but... Cool. I never seen that game before. Nice. Okay, and the back part bulges a little bit. I'm happy this technique is working pretty well for this. I'll probably have to blend these two frames together and create a kind of a third frame, but still, this is nice to have this, this bulge work so easily.
And Bob's your uncle. That might be too much there on the last bit there, but. Nice, right on. Yeah, Vlambeer is pretty cool, right? What is it you like about Vlambeer, Rocket Bunny? What is it that makes you say that? Why why is it why is Vlambeer uh what you want to be when you're older? So if I go halfway between these two frames and then do let's try this this technique of the guys from Ader posted about this on one on their thread a long time ago. I never tried this technique, it might work well here. But you take two frames and you put them both at 50%, but you put it to, to dissolve. Oh, wait, no, I guess you just want to dissolve on the second frame. <laughs> Whoa, that's crazy. Let's see what that looks like, though. Wow, interesting. It's almost like it's reaching out. Wow, you, let's try this with more frames. Let's see what happens. I mean, I'm not sure that it's exactly the right, but it might be. This might actually work. Huh. What did Vlambeer make? Nuclear Throne? Because you love the Vlambeer effect? But what, what's that? What, did, what is the Vlambeer effect? Sorry. It does kind of look cool, right? Let's try, let's try that same thing with more frames in it. Oh. So we'll duplicate that. And then this time it'll only be 25%. And we'll do it one more time. And this time it'll be 75%. So we got more frames to kind of fill that in. And then we can duplicate these frames on the outside coming back to this frame. So Oh, that's too many. Huh, it definitely lost its magic there. Hmm. Oh, yeah. Okay, I got you. I got you. Yeah. Did you Rocket Bunny? Did you see um? Did you see this post? You can really, if you haven't seen this, let me let me post a cool link from the Vlamber guys. Uh. There you go. I got a great link for you. This is, the, this is from Vlambeer. They did the talk at Dutch Game Garden. And this is, it's called the art of the scream shake, but really it's way more than just screen shake. He goes into a bunch of different techniques for how to make games more fun, more juicy, more, you know, how to make your bullets cool, how to make your screen shake cool, how to make your sounds awesome and everything. This is a really, really rad video. If you haven't seen, it's like game development 101 type of, stuff you should know. So that's a great link there. You've probably seen that already if you've been It's like all tabbing now, but is it really? 
Wait, is it? Is it actually working? It might be. Oh no, now the, the camera's going in and out. Oh, I hate this bug. It sucks. Is it okay? Or is it not okay? I gotta save all my documents in case I have to. This just crashes. Is it working again? It might be. It might have recovered. No. Yeah, nothing. What's wrong with the